Robin Hood uh, have brought you gold and food to ease your hardship. Oh look, it's Robin Hood. I assume he stole that from the rich. Oh, then you can take it right back where it came from. Uh, but uh, you need it more than they. Look, uh, I don't know how you do it in Sherwood Forest, but here in Nottingham, we believe in trickle-down economics. What is trickle-down economics? Well, let's see what the peasants say. That's where we pay more taxes, right? Uh, and the rich, they keep all their money. But then they buy stuff, and then we all get rich together. Yeah! Yeah! That's the correct definition, right? Well, not exactly. The term has actually been used as an insult in order to discredit an actual theory called supply-side economics. It is unknown when the term exactly originated, but it appears it was first coined by Will Rogers in 1932 where he stated, the money was all appropriated for the top in the hopes that it would trickle down to the needy in response to FDR being elected due to the Great Depression. Trickle-down economics states that low taxes on the rich, business, capital gains and dividends will lead to significant spending by the wealthy and greater hiring of workers, and these benefits would eventually go up to the lower classes, which is similar to what the peasants said. In other words, targeted tax cuts would supposedly improve the economy. This is in contrast to supply-side economics, which actually argues that tax cuts on all income groups, rich and poor, would benefit the economy as well as deregulation. This would boost the economy, not due to the rich spending more, but because less taxes and less regulation will allow entrepreneurs to set up new businesses easier and existing businesses to invest in new technologies, increase the quality of their products, and produce a higher supply of goods and services, hence the term supply-side economics. Hiring more workers and rich people spending more might be icing on the cake, but are not the main points of the theory. The writer of this skit may also claim the poor pay more in taxes than the rich due to the rich being able to use tax loopholes to pay less tax rates than the poor. But it can be argued that the loophole was caused by a large complicated tax code of high taxes and tax exemptions. Maybe a simple flat tax rate of something like 10 or 20% for everyone else would solve this. So when were both of these terms used interchangeably? Back in the 1980s, the Republican Party, led by American President Ronald Reagan, were hoping to implement his economic theory in the US. Now, while Wikipedia claimed opponents negatively used the term trickle-down to attack Reagan's economic policy, there's no citation for this, and I couldn't find any source to back this up. However, a 1992 Ross Perot presidential ad used the term as well as multiple democratic politicians in the present day, which means it is highly probable the term was used negatively in the 1980s. Therefore, the Republicans faced stiff opposition from both the Democrats, who most likely decried it as trickle-down, and even members within his own party, such as George H.W. Bush, who called it voodoo economics. Reagan had to think of something quick, so he referred to his economic theory as supply-side economics to the American people, which helped popularize the term. Okay. This is my gold and food. It belongs to me, and I am giving it to you as a charitable donation. Oh, oh yeah. get away from me! We don't take handouts. Yeah. I personally support the welfare state, but wish there were a better alternative, since there are problems with this system. For example, if a person's welfare benefits exceed the wages of the jobs they can take, then the person may make a rational cost-benefit analysis and voluntarily take the benefits instead of the job. This happens enough times, then there will be less workers, henceforth less tax revenue to fund the welfare state. While people may suggest that giving more money to the lower ends of the income scale rather than the rich would stimulate the economy, I am very skeptical of this claim. Why? Well, in response to the financial crisis, the Economic Stimulus Act of 2008 was enacted, where two-thirds of the $152 million bill was given to 130 million households. According to the National Bureau of Economic Research, 20% of recipients reported that they would spend the rebate, 32% reported they would save it, and 48% reported mostly using it to pay debt. In addition, 
there is no correlation between spending and lower incomes, since 58% of those earning less than $20,000 plan to spend it on their debt versus 40% of those earning above $75,000, saying they wanted to spend on debt. Although due to the recession, people would more likely save than spend. Big thanks to Andrew from Don't Walk, Run Productions, who pointed this out to me. His video is in the description, but mostly talks about Andrew Yang. Give him a watch. Look, if you keep taking from the rich and giving to the poor, well, middle class, middle class, sorry, then all the rich will move to a place that's more economically favorable. What? their lords what do you think they're gonna do move their castles oh yes where will the rich go well according to the daily mail or mail online 420,000 people left new york which is five percent of the population from first march to first may and ten percent of income earners in the top ten percent left now i know this was during the pandemic where new york covid deaths are really high and i hope the best for them but I'd argue that the crisis exacerbated the mass exodus of New Yorkers since before the pandemic, 300 New Yorkers left per day due to the tax rates. Of course, there were other factors, but the excessive taxation and lack of incentives for businesses doesn't help. And if you enact high taxation on a national scale, then the rich would leave to other countries with much lower tax rates, and this is especially easier with advancements in technology and travel. Oh, and look at this little tidbit. Between March 1st and March 15th, there was a small trickle out of New York. What's that? Trickle out? Of course it became bigger after school closures, but I think I have a name for economic theories that make the rich pay extremely high taxes, causing them to leave. The trickle out effect. And if that didn't convince you, corporations can leave to other countries with relatively lower costs of production and cheaper labor as Robin demonstrates here. I'm going to take the gold with me, and I'm going to travel 50 miles away to Worcester. Yes, Worcester! Because screw supporting the local economy, the sticks they make there are cheaper! You <laughs> now you may ask, why am I even responding to a YouTube skit by College Humor? Well, that's not the point. It is the views held by the skit that are important, since many people hold this view and have straw-manned supply-side economics as wealth trickling down to the poor. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please give a like and comment since it really helps my video in the YouTube algorithm. My next video will be about Trump and the coronavirus, so subscribe or bookmark this channel if you want to see that. There's other videos coming up as well, and I'll, I'll see you later, and thanks for watching my video.